a little bit of a different format for this particular review. Although I, I think tonight may be more of a rant than anything else, Spooks and Spookettes. Of course, normally I like to take my time with movie reviews. I like to write them out and have some sort of produced content for you. For this particular case, I felt like I just needed to have all of my thoughts out on Godzilla Minus One uh, as raw and potentially uh, clumsy as they may be. Sometimes I'm not the best improviser, so I have a tendency to stumble on my words, and I'm going to do the very best I can uh, with tonight's video. I do apologize in advance if I uh, ramble on and, you know, maybe uh, maybe some of the, the points don't exactly uh, fire across coherently. Uh, but, you know, the truth of the matter is this movie would have been very difficult for me to just sit down and write out a review and then ultimately produce it, at least right now, because it set fire to my brain, quite frankly. This film, um, to put it in a modern context, it wrecked me uh, in the best way possible. So I, I went to go see the movie a couple of days ago, and, you know... My first thoughts going in, I had fairly reasonable expectations. I thought it was going to be a good film. Um, the trailers looked interesting. It looked like a pretty decent Godzilla movie uh, was going to be made. I was... I don't know if you would say I was concerned, but I wasn't quite sure how they were going to make the whole post-war angle work. Um... It was a little confusing for me because I didn't know if they were going to uh, make this a part of traditional Godzilla canon. Uh, I didn't know if this was uh, a reboot, uh, a prequel, may, you know, maybe the story of Gojira told from a different perspective. Uh, I didn't know, but I was going to go see it anyway because it's Godzilla. You know, up until this point... Um, I know it seems that maybe I've been a little bit too um, too much of a positive movie reviewer in a way. I feel that way because I know that 10 years ago I really gave uh, a positive review uh, for the, the first Godzilla film from Legendary Pictures with Brian Cranston. Now, in hindsight, I never thought that movie was great. Uh, but at the time, I did enjoy it. It was just nice to see a Godzilla film on the big screen that wasn't terrible, like the Matthew Broderick Godzilla film. And, you know, subsequently, watching the MonsterVerse films, I felt like they did get better from the first film. I particularly enjoyed King of the Monsters. I did like Kong, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, although I felt King of the Monsters was a little bit more of a traditional Godzilla film, as it were. And, you know, the Monarch TV series, I've seen the first couple of episodes. It's not bad. Um, not quite as exciting as I would like for it to be, but I understand that it may be a slow build-up. Uh, with all that being said, I knew that these particular films, these particular projects, were good or fun, or decent, but I understood fully that these weren't great. Because right after the Brian Cranston Godzilla film, uh, we had Shin Godzilla that Toho put out. That film was amazing. And of course, it put the 2014 Godzilla film to shame in, in every, by every metric. It was a, a compelling human storyline. Uh, the special effects were fantastic. You know, there may have been some uh, minor issues with the dialogue, because, you know, sometimes uh, the Japanese actors would switch over and speak English, and their English wasn't particularly great. But it's such a minor... It's th th it, You know what? That's not even worth mentioning. Uh, the fact of the matter is, Shin Godzilla was great. I would say the only thing that I had against it, if you can even call it that, I do kind of wish that maybe there was another kaiju that Godzilla could have fought, but it, that's, it's fine. I it, I was okay with it. It didn't bother me. It was still um, a fantastic film, a masterpiece of a movie. 
But it sort of put Legendary in this weird pickle, because it's like, well, Toho is still making Godzilla content, and it's top-notch. So they kept turning out these movies that they made, King of the Monsters and uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. I thought they were fun, they were enjoyable. They had issues, but it wasn't enough for me to not at least enjoy the films and appreciate them. And it did bring other generations of newer Godzilla films into the fold. I did appreciate that aspect of it. Now, I say all this to say, after seeing Godzilla Minus One, and also after seeing the trailer for uh, Godzilla Kong The New Empire, I think it would just be well that Legendary just stop. And maybe pull a, a Zaslav and just shelve this thing. Uh, and, and potentially save themselves some embarrassment. Godzilla Minus One wasn't just a great Godzilla film. It was a great film. Period. A masterpiece. A masterpiece, dare I say, that way surpassed Shin Godzilla. It's a much better film than Shin Godzilla. As if we didn't think that was even possible, they did it. I was completely blown away. And that's why it took me maybe a couple of days to really have the, the urge to come forward and share with you my thoughts because I kind of thought I was insane. I enjoyed the movie so much that I, even right now as I'm sitting here, I can't stop thinking about it. I haven't felt this feeling in a long time. I Sitting there and watching this film with other Godzilla fans, I knew that I watched something special and something that was genuinely groundbreaking. But I wanted to check myself because I know that in the past, you know, I've, I've been a little too hunky-dory, as it were. And the one thing that I always want to be clear uh, as... Well, I wear a lot of hats, so I, I know that being a film reviewer isn't my my only uh, job title, but it is something that I do on this channel. I do take it seriously, as I do with all my content. I don't know if I'm the greatest movie reviewer in the world. I'm just a vampire who enjoys movies. And I'm also a vampire that has been in movies that makes video content. I know sometimes the video content that I make isn't top-notch. So I try to be a little bit more generous in my reviews because I understand how challenging it can be to make film or to make video content. <laughs> it's funny because I, I, I meant this sort of sarcastically, but after watching Godzilla Minus One, I, I kind of felt like I should just stop because <laughs> the most perfect movie was made. And I really, I, well, I just want to say that I wanted to really think it over a bit and challenge myself and say, okay, did I really enjoy this movie that much? Am I getting swallowed up by the hype? Am I allowing others' opinions to affect my, um, my analysis of the movie? Because I've been guilty of that in the past. I, because... Admittedly, movies like Godzilla King of the Monsters, there may have been a little bit of a, a touch of that, of me being potentially influenced by the joy and the excitement of other Godzilla fans that I sort of got hooked on that feeling as well. And maybe it sort of clouded my judgment. And it's Godzilla. It's one of the few movie franchises that I have a extreme emotional connection to. Because I have seen every Godzilla film ever made uh, at least twice, uh, and some more than that. I love Godzilla so much. And this movie was probably the only Godzilla film that I watched where I got emotional. I was moved by the human story of this film. There have been some Godzilla films that have pretty at least decent human story films but let's face it we as got we as giant monster fans we don't go into these movies expecting these we just want to see giant monsters fight each other or 
giant monsters destroy cities. But we got so much more with this film. We got so much more than we did, I would say, probably in any other Godzilla film. This movie may have surpassed the original. I don't want to come come out and say it just yet, but I, I, I just, I, I feel weird for admitting that. I really do. Because Gojira was such a, a, a powerful film when it came out in the 50s, and it changed what a giant monster movie could be. It really did. And it was great because it captured the, f the fear and anxiety uh, of, of Japanese society at that time, and it told it uh, with a really innovative allegory in the form of a giant monster that was mutated through radiation. And this film recaptures that. And I think that that's why it's such a great movie. I won't go too far into the weeds, uh, but I will give you a, a quick overview, or the quickest overview I can of the plot of the film. Um, the The main character's name is uh, uh, Koichi uh, Sh uh, Shishikashima. I apologize in advance for any uh, folks of Japanese descent that are watching and listening to me butcher their language. Um, it's a beautiful language. I just don't have uh, a good ear for it. Um, but he is a... Anyway, he is a kamikaze pilot, and um, let's just say that he is uh, not ready to um, carry out his mission, uh, if you know what, uh, what a kamikaze pilot is supposed to do. So he lands on the island of Odo, well, the Odo Islands, I believe it's a chain. Um, it's, it actually harkens back to uh, Gojira, um, if you remember from the first film. Uh, they've turned the island into a uh, sort of a, um, a makeshift mechanic shop so that pilots can land there and uh, get their planes fixed so they can go out and carry their carry on their missions. And uh, so he stops in because he says that his plane is faulty. And while he's on the island, uh, we see Godzilla for the first time. And he makes his way to the island and basically massacres the entire mechanic team. And our protagonist, uh, Shish uh, Shikashima, is about to jump into his plane and uh, use the machine gun that's attached to the plane, but he, he loses his nerve and he freezes. And, of course, uh, Godzilla is able to, um, uh, to murder the entire crew, and it haunts him. So he's living uh, with what he failed to do on Odo Island. He's also living with uh, the shame of living through the war and of course he returns to uh, his native Tokyo where he's kind of sort of spat on because he survived the war when so many didn't uh, and while he's uh, back in Tokyo uh, he manages to meet uh, a young lady and um, a, a, a baby uh, the two actually are not related but like him he has no family left, so they all sort of uh, join together, and over the years, they sort of create their own family. And uh, they rebuild their lives in Tokyo, uh, and Tokyo itself rebuilds. Um, Koichi is uh, given a job uh, to sort of blow up mines uh, in, in or around the sea, uh, and of course he... Uh, he has a crew of uh, three folks. Uh, a couple of them actually were veterans like himself. Uh, and then there's a younger man who's in the mix. Uh, they're, they're co-workers and they become friends. And that's important because, um, you know, they build camaraderie and you actually enjoy uh, the side characters that come into the mix. And uh, just as things are starting to rebuild, as it were, uh, Godzilla emerges, and he's about five times bigger than what he was on Odo Island because um, he was in or around the Bikini Atoll, and uh, the radiation from atomic testing uh, mutated him. So now he's the big bad Godzilla that we all know and love, but 
But this film uh, shows us the carnage and destruction from the perspective of the people down below, and it's uh, uh, it's it's hard to love. <laughs> but it's it's a it's it, it's a beautiful film because not only do you feel for um, our protagonist and his family. Uh, not only do you fall in love uh, with uh, his, his friends, but you're also inspired. Because when Godzilla comes in and he wrecks uh, the city of Jinza, which I believe is on the outskirts of Tokyo, and he, he comes about at a time where Japan is reeling from the war and they themselves are in such a, a vulnerable, defeated place... And this giant monster comes ashore and just wrecks what little they have. It's tragic, and it's it's really hard to watch, actually, because um, because you know that that the, these people are already in such a uh, uh, I mean, for lack of a better word, they're in such a low state, and to see them brought down even further, it's it's a real gut punch. But it becomes inspiring because. These characters that we fall in love with, that we get to know, we see them rise up uh, with the rest of uh, of their the rest of their community and with other uh, war veterans who who are just sort of rallied and they see this as an opportunity to fight for a better future for themselves, for their families, for their country, and they all take it upon themselves and they do it without the help of the Japanese government because uh, the, the government doesn't want to get involved. They're not even acknowledging that Godzilla attacked Japan uh, because they're afraid that if they uh, get their military in the mix, if they get the U.S. military involved, uh, that they could uh, escalate tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union because this is right at the dawn of the Cold War era. And it's just... I, I still get chills just thinking about it, how awe-inspiring it, it all was. And I, and I know I'm, I'm rambling on and on, and I'm, I'm probably saying the same words over and over again, but really, this was something, this was beautiful. I've never watched a Godzilla movie where I was this moved uh, with, the whole, with the human uh, storyline. And I don't recall ever seeing a Godzilla film that was so hopeful um you know in some of the other iterations of godzilla we when godzilla is more of the hero of the story um it's when it's easy to root for him i guess you get this sense of triumph um i felt that a lot in many godzilla films but i've never felt hope um and as a vampire it's it's an interesting feeling to uh to come across <laughs> as it were. American cinema is in decline. That point was really driven home to me when I watched this film. I'll explain. I'm hearing reports that Godzilla Minus One was made for anything around 15 million to about 35 million dollars. And in, in either case, that is a significantly smaller budget than your average American film made by the mainstream uh, Hollywood system. Um, I believe that Godzilla, King of the Monsters, or maybe Godzilla uh, versus Kong may have been made for, I think, about $200 million apiece. Um, Disney spent about that much money for uh, their latest film, Wish. And... Godzilla Minus One is an infinitely better film than Wish or The Marvels or any of these movies that have come out this year that cost well over $100 million. It's a better movie than Napoleon. I went to go see Napoleon uh, the same week that I went to go see Godzilla Minus One. It's okay at best, especially compared to this. And, and I, I'll reiterate my point again. This movie is so good, is so great, excuse me, that 
if the Academy Awards still meant something, this movie should get several nominations. I've never said that about a Godzilla film, ever. But it, it should. It is the best movie of the year, at least. It should get nominated for Best Cinematography, Best Sound Design, Best Score. It should win Best Foreign Language Film. I would even argue that this movie should be nominated for Best Picture overall. But I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen because Godzilla embarrassed the major studios this weekend. And, and it is embarrassing because this film was made for, a, what, less than a third of the budget that most uh, mainstream Hollywood movies are made for, and it's a million times better. Like, Disney should be ashamed of themselves for putting out a movie like Wish thinking that it was good. Or, or the Marvels, or really anything that they've put out this year, with maybe the exception of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen it. I did see the new Indiana Jones film. I have to be honest, I wasn't impressed. But that's neither here nor there. Um, like I said, this is the rant. <laughs> but Hollywood needs to get its act together. And I know I'm not the only one that's saying that, but I remember a time not so long ago where a Godzilla movie was sort of laughed at by people of polite society in the film world, uh, in, by film critics. You know, you wouldn't dare uh, say that a Godzilla movie was as good as a, a movie like uh, The Godfather or Singing in the Rain because these movies are classics. These movies were the standards of American film. And don't get me wrong, those are great films. I, I'm not here to... Um, to to bash any of the of, of the the classics of of, of yesteryear uh, that aren't horror, um, I do appreciate other genres besides horror. But I'm I'm just saying, I'm sure there've been plenty of people that have been laughed at for uh, putting uh, Godzilla versus Mothra and um, and uh, It's a Wonderful Life in the same sentence. But I feel like that those, I feel like that's changed now. Those days are over because we have a movie that, at least right now, maybe I'll change my mind. I think this movie has the makings to be the standard, just like a Godfather, or just like even a Citizen Kane. Or, or or any of the 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 classic um, movies that are in your top ten list, or movies that the AFI approves. It's amazing to me, because twenty years ago, who would have ever thought of this? But it's happening right now in real time. The monster movies are beating Disney, and. I don't think that the time is far away where you're going to see countries like Japan, Korea, and India. Their film industry is going to eclipse our film industry. And I can't say that I can't say that uh, that that's a bad thing, honestly. But you know, I, I'm not saying that as if. You know, Japan and Korea and India, like if the if their film industries did eclipse us, uh, good on them. If they're making great movies, they absolutely should be, because America isn't making great movies anymore. At least in the mainstream level, we're not. And I think Hollywood. I know they're probably not going to listen to me specifically, but for people who are of the same mindset as me. They should listen to what the audience is telling them. And I don't think they will. I think they'll take what I'm saying, what other people are saying. Because they're embarrassed, they're going to twist it around and say, oh, well, 
you only liked Godzilla minus one because you're, um, I'll just say it, because you're bigoted. Because that seems to be the go-to when they attack somebody for criticizing their films, whether it's legitimate criticism or not. I've seen that with Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. I've seen it with all of the Disney Star Wars shows. It's always this, oh, well, you didn't like it because we have a diverse cast and how dare you. And they're just doing that, in my opinion, because they're deflecting the fact that they're making terrible content and people are calling out on them. It's, it was the perfect shield. But now more and more people are seeing through it. It's just going to turn more and more people off. And nobody's going to want to watch their content anymore. More than they already aren't. And more and more people like me who value good storytelling, who value great films and great shows, we're just going to stop watching American movies. And we're going to watch more... Japanese films or Indian films or Korean films because because they are catering to what we want. And all we want is good storytelling. And it just seems like right now that is the furthest concern for Hollywood. Hollywood cares more about uh, quote, uh, quotas for um, diversity for their movies. And I, I've got nothing against diversity. I, I'm all for casting the right person for the right role, regardless of what their what their race is. But that should be secondary to the quality of the story of the movie that you're telling. And I think that that's. I I, I think that that is part of the reason why the American film industry is in a lot of trouble right now is because we are, well, for one thing, we just, we keep pulling from the same well of the same movie franchises. And yes, I recognize the irony because I did, I'm ranting and raving about a, a really great reboot. I, I understand that. But at least with this reboot, it is a fresh retelling that's something completely different and bold. Um, and honestly, for me, I would I would argue that it's not really a reboot. I would say it is more of a reimagining because for me, you could very plausibly fit this movie. You could almost say that it's a prequel to uh, Gojira, 1954. It, a little bit. Um Okay, maybe not a prequel, but it does, it could fit pretty well in right before Gojira, I think. Well, I, whatever. I'm just saying that this was a fresh take. This was different. It was something that we've never seen before. And it's because Toho was focused on telling a great story. And I, I really hope that Legendary kind of takes a step back and realizes that it's going to kind of be a waste of our time if they're if we're basically going to just keep going in this cycle where they put out content that's at best enjoyable but most likely mediocre and then ho ho shows them up and just keeps churning out masterpieces look i'll go see it i'll go see godzilla and kong or Godzilla X Kong, whatever the, however you pronounce the title of the film. I might enjoy it, but I can already tell you just what I've seen off of the trailer. I don't see how it's going to surpass Godzilla Minus One. This film was one for the ages. And, <laughs> and the direction we're going. Uh, if the, the big wigs in the major studios, if, uh, if they're not going to listen to the audience, the title of this video, it sort of harkens to what happens when a monarch passes away, particularly in England. The headlines usually read, The Queen is dead. Long live the king.
Well, for this particular case, Hollywood is dead. Long live the King of the Monsters.